I was supposed to be honored for my win, but everyone forgot and my wife's awkward apology made it even worse. Myself, my wife and friends from college, including best friend and his wife, have been doing a college football pick'em league for the last 12 years. It's for fun, but I'd say most everyone takes it somewhat seriously. Since we've had the league different people won, but for six years in a row one particular guy kept winning. Each year, we have a big tailgate party at a game, where the winner of the previous year is honored with a speech and trophy. Last year, we even arranged for a surprise cameo to be played at the tailgate for the guy who won his sixth in a row. I broke his streak last year and won the league, but I was also the person who typically got the trophy and arranged the cameo or some of the other cool things we've done. So yesterday was our big tailgate, and it was my chance at being recognized as the person who won the previous year. A few hours in, my wife had a few drinks and said, I don't even know what we're doing this year for, person who won six years in a row. And then I said that actually I had won, and her whole face changed. Our friend standing next to her turned white as a ghost. First they laughed, then said, no wait it was you. I realized that until that moment hadn't occurred to them, or anyone, to do anything. There was no trophy speech anything. My best friend quickly gets told by my wife that they forgot to do something and says nothing. Can't make eye contact, it's worse for me. After it sets in, I'm in the bathroom an hour later. I walk out, and some people start clapping because my wife had awkwardly arranged for the crowd at the party to do something. I'm just sad. I don't really want to talk to my wife. She gave me a very short apology this morning and offered sex to cheer me up. Made it worse. Drove six hours home crying here and they're wondering how a group of people I love and care about would drop the ball. Sent a text out to some saying how shitty it was to be forgotten. Sucks. I'm sure tomorrow I'll be less sad. Relevant comments. Comment 1. You're the planner. You're the one that keeps people together and makes sure no one or thing is forgotten. So, when you don't do all the work, no one else does. It's really crappy they forgot to celebrate your win. You deserved a hurrah and they let you down. Really sorry OP. Congrats. Comment 2. They did drop the ball and then handled it really inappropriately. Sincere apologies were needed ASAP and then making it up to you. I'd truly join another league just to take your mind off it and detach a little from that scene. Even if they don't do celebrations. You're the planner of the group that still isn't cool. I hate football. But this got me worked up. Comment 3. Everyone likes to accept rewards and praise, but not everyone likes to return the favor. OP went out of their way to make sure whoever won had a good time and felt special for six years and got nothing in return when it was his time to shine. And to top it off, his wife is trying to downplay it and act like he's overreacting. Feels bad. Least they could do is apologize, especially the MF who laughed at OP is the one who made his win special in the first place. Comment 4. Next time your wife is upset, offer her sex to cheer her up. Comment 5, this isn't stupid at all, you're validated in feeling how you do, and it's shitty as fuck that your friends and wife didn't recognize how important this was to you. I totally get it, it isn't about fantasy football, it's the pretense of the entire situation. Honestly, if it were me, I would tell my friends via phone call or face to face, not text, and tell them how it made you feel unappreciated as a member of the friend group, as well as how it hurt how they reacted after realizing you were the winner. And not because it was over a game of fantasy football but because this is clearly something you all put effort and emphasis into for multiple years, and there's no excuse for just brushing you off. I would also tell your wife how it made you feel with offering sex. Sex isn't something to be rewarded or withheld, and that set off smoke alarm bells for me personally. You deserve to be surrounded by people who appreciate you the same way you do for them. This isn't something to accept, it's important that you say something. I know it's uncomfy, but it's worth it. Sending you love, OP, thank you very much, really. I teared up that anyone felt sympathetic, I'm in my house and feel like I'm on an island by myself. Update, it's tomorrow, after a night where I slept in the guest bedroom. Late last night I got an email apology from the girl who turned white when she found out. My wife woke up at 6 to get ready for work, and I was up helping kids get ready for school. She wanted to talk, and asked if I could talk also. I was half awake, and didn't have any thoughts put together. The first thing she says is that I need to keep perspective. She said that it's not as if she cheated on me, she forgot something big but there are much worse things that could have happened. I didn't respond. She asked how long she was going to be punished for this and I just responded by saying it wasn't all about her. She is visibly frustrated and I'm too afraid to say something that will ignite her. I feel like she's desperate for me to say anything. I realize she's not comforting me or trying to understand. She wants full resolution before we have to take kids trick or treating tonight. That's it for now. She texted good morning and I haven't responded. Relevant comments comment one. When the planner doesn't plan, shit doesn't get done. I am sorry that your lame-ass friends didn't treat you well by remembering to celebrate your win. I'm even more sorry that none of them had the guts to come clean and apologize in front of the group for being such a shitty friend. And finally, to the guy that laughed, and who no one shut down when he was please accept my two-finger salute over the internet. Now that I've established that I'm firmly on your side, I ask you, what do you want to have happen now? Think long and hard about what it is that you want. Yes, this whole fantasy football thing is shitty, but what sort of friends are these guys outside of this situation? Would you call them if you needed help moving, and would they come? if you suffered a real tragedy, 
Would any of them be another shoulder to cry on? If you have kids, or were to have kids in the future, would you invite these people to be a part of your child's life? If these people are merely the college fantasy football bros, then maybe you need to consider letting them all go. You've devoted considerable time and effort, and maybe money, into making these events fun for them, but when the time came for them to return the favor, they didn't care enough to get the job done. I don't blame them for not being more sincere in their apologies on the day this all went down. By your account, they were all caught flat-footed, and it's hard for most of us to admit our mistakes and apologize properly, when we're still processing what an asshole we've been. Have any of them reached out since? Only you can decide how much these people mean to you, and whether you want them in your life going forward. If I were you, I would write a huge screed about everything I'd done for the group over the past years, trying to make this event a yearly spectacle. I wouldn't cuss or throw around insults, but I would make it very clear to everyone that this event is so much fun every year because of my hard work. Then I'd end it with how disappointed I was that none of them saw fit to return the favor when I was the winner. I would absolutely point out that the previous winner laughed and was a complete jerk, and that it was shitty of them not to shut that noise down, but I'm petty like that. Maybe you're not that petty. I'd fire this off into the group chat, or whatever you guys used to communicate, and see what happens. Maybe you'll get a ton of heartfelt apologies, and they'll plan an extravaganza in your honor, and all will be well. Or maybe you'll get back a bunch of hate, and you'll see their true colors. Either way, you'll have your answer as to what sort of friends they really are. Once you've sorted the friend situation, you'll need to sort things with your wife. I have a lot of questions for her, and I imagine you do too. Why didn't she organize something to celebrate your win? For starters, the wife might be something that requires marriage counseling, but only you two can determine that at. EP, I don't know. I don't want anything. As of this morning, I'm just wanting to not have this tension with my wife. But I'm kind of stuck on feeling let down and she's supposed to be the person that doesn't do that. Comment 2. Is your wife always as shitty as she seems here? OP, no, she's great, and a wonderful partner. But one major part of her personality is that she hates any feeling of having done something wrong. It's like she becomes a different person. Comment 3. So, bad sex and a weak apology is how she makes up for it. Comment 4. And then getting upset at OP for feeling hurt and making it about herself. Now to the next story, story 2. I'm leaving my boyfriend after two years together because of his prenup demands. Why I chose to walk away from a relationship that felt one-sided. I'm 34F, breaking up with my boyfriend 34M because of a prenup I've been with my boyfriend for about two years. Everything is going well and we love each other. We've been discussing marriage and he mentioned he would not marry me without a prenup. We discussed this in detail and I did not like what he proposed. His family owns a lot of property land and has lots of savings. After marriage, he wants me to move into one of the houses his parents own. I told him I'm uncomfortable building a life and a family in a house I have no ownership in, and he didn't understand. I told him I'd prefer to rent a place together, or we can live temporarily in one of his parents' houses and look at property together, but he refused. He said he liked the houses his parents and he already owned. He said he would not buy other property. He said he would not sell any of his property to buy one with me. He told me if I wanted to own property, I could save up money by living in one of these properties and invest in one myself. Problem is, he would be entitled to half if we divorce since my purchase would happen after marriage. He told me I could pay his parents' rent if I feel like I don't belong on the property. He told me I could buy half of the house we live in from his parents. Problem is, I don't like the houses that him or his parents own. They also have a lot of stuff and I feel like there's no space for me. I want to look at houses. I want to pick the place I live in, and I want to do it with my partner. I've made this clear to him over and over, but he won't budge. He earns more than me and he has more assets than me for sure. He made it clear he was afraid I was a gold digger, and he wanted to protect himself and his family's assets from me, which I can understand. This whole thing has made me feel very weird. This topic has come up before, and it has always made me feel very small. It makes me feel like all he cares about are his assets. It makes me feel like he wants me as long as I fit into the life he already built, and doesn't care to build one with me. It makes me feel like a gold digger. He has enough money to retire right now, and live comfortably. I don't. He basically told me that whatever money he earns now, he can spend so he won't be investing in too much anymore. He expects our earnings and our savings after marriage to be split. Which I feel off about. I'm sure this is normal for some people. I'm sure other people would be happy to be with someone who is well off. I am not. I want someone beside me building a life with me. Not someone who has built a life with his parents and wants me as long as I behave and fits into his life. Which is how he's been making me feel. So, I'm leaving him. I welcome opinions on this. But, yeah. It's been too long that this has made me feel off about our relationship. I'm protecting my peace and leaving him with all his houses and money. Toldra, BF and I are talking about marriage. Boyfriend and his family are well off. He wants me to live in a house I don't own and doesn't want to look at houses with me. I wants half of post-prenup assets. So I'm leaving. Relevant comments. OP adds context to the prenup talk during their relationship. No. He mentioned prenups very early and I would keep asking him about the details, but he would keep it very vague and assure me we would work it out when the time came. 
I never asked him about his assets, and I never actually knew how much assets his family had. The only things I knew were from some of his one-off comments about certain assets. If he mentioned this tenant, or that tenant, or this thing they have to repair etc, etc. I had also initiated these conversations. He mentioned wanting to live with me and work towards marriage. I figured then that time had come. This is when I sat him down and asked him what he expected from me, what he wanted, and to clarify the conditions of any prenups he wanted to propose, he still tried to dodge my inquiry. It took so long for me to pull this information out of him. I guess I did wait two years, but marriage talk seemed like the right time to push him to discuss it. Update, so many things have happened. This is a bit of a rant, and I know I'm missing parts, but I'll try to cover the important bits. Before I start, here's some important context. I have a stable and rewarding career, and though I don't earn as much as him, I am very happy with what I can afford. My parents have always taught me that women should be independent, and I've taken that to heart. I live below my means, which has allowed me to put money aside for savings and investments. A lot of comments have mentioned that I should take the free rent, and that it would somehow set me forward in life. But for me, giving up my sense of autonomy and control over my home, my safe space, is not worth the potential savings. I lived with my parents and saved aggressively until I was 30, so I am lucky enough to be in a position where I can comfortably afford rent or a mortgage by myself. Plus, he expected the living situation to be permanent. I would not move into a house owned by someone else just to save on rent. Would it be nice to save $2,000 a month? Sure, but most people pay rent, and I am not an exception. If I really wanted that, I could move back in with my parents. But again, autonomy is very important to me. Also, if he's this stubborn now, I don't see how this situation could be improved later after I already moved in. I could also counter the prenup and make it so all my accumulated assets stay mine, or put in a clause that I'll be compensated for any children we have, or put that I'd get a limoni, or at least have a roof over my head in case we divorce. But for me, that feels overly transactional. It also gives me the vibes that I'm going to be living with a roommate who I sleep with and might have babies with, not a partner. I prefer to feel like we're in it together. He can keep what was his, but I want to build up what is ours. Also, if everything is completely split, it'll open up a new can of worms. How will our expenses be split if I'm working and he's just chilling? What happens when we have children? He has money saved for them, but will I get a say in how we spend that money? I know these can be worked out, but this is not the type of marriage I want. I can't predict everything that will happen, and I don't think I can capture it in a contract. And it's already been so heartbreaking for me, I don't want to go through more. Anyways, yada yada yada. I'll just say that it felt like I was being stripped of my autonomy, stonewalled, and treated like a hostile. Okay, on to updates. So I told him I needed to end this relationship. I appreciated and truly enjoyed my time with him, but our financial values and the preferred married lifestyle just don't match. It was a quick and easy conversation fee. I expected the breakup to be a bit of a process, not a one and done thing, since our lives overlap a lot. I'm also in contact with a lot of his family, so awk, during this whole time, a lot of them got involved, but blah blah, not super relevant to updates, talk with his parents. Okay I love his parents. I had a great relationship with them. I would go over to their house, we would have food, chat, watch teeth, sometimes I would go to the parties they host without my ex if he was busy. A few days after my talk with my ex, I went over to say goodbye. I didn't know if the prenup was family enforced or not, so I kept it very general, and mainly focused on how the situation made me feel, and what I was looking for in a relationship. His parents were shocked when I told them why I was leaving. I'm going to bullet point the rest. His parents really want grandbabies. However, my ex's younger brother and son do not want kids. They were so happy when I came into their lives and she found out I wanted kids. His parents had created their wealth together, with his dad being the major breadwinner for most of the relationship. His mom was shocked at what he was offering me, saying these aren't the values he was raised with. She had been effectively retired since almost 15 years ago, and she said ex's dad never made her feel uncomfortable because of the difference in earning potential. They told me that they built their assets for themselves and their children. They said that includes whoever their children decided to share their lives with they have many properties. However, they also have enough investments that they can live off of those. They told me their plan was to sign over a house of our choosing as a wedding gift, or sell a house and give us cash so we could buy a house we both wanted. As they got older, they planned to evenly divide their properties between my ex and his brother, since they wouldn't want to manage the properties anymore and live off investments. Ex's mom said she would have made sure my name was on my ex's portion, especially since we were wanting kids. They mentioned investments will go directly into funds for grandkids after their passing. Maybe this is what my ex was referring to when he said his children would be set. Bit morbid though. Ex's mom told me that the mother of her grandbabies would be taken care of, and she wanted us to be on equal footing while raising a family. TBH, this conversation was kind of like a weight off my chest. I always loved his family and never felt excluded, but the prenup talks left me confused and hurt. What they said fit with what I knew from my ex and them before. I'd be lying if I said I didn't start imagining this life I talked to my ex again. I'll bullet point this too. Basically he told me his dad had joked before about how he hoped him and his brother would not find gold diggers. 
and that's where that comment came from. He felt responsibility to protect his parents' assets, since he didn't feel entitled to them. So by extension, I wasn't entitled either. In his culture, sons carry on the family line, so he felt he had to keep his assets in the family line, which I'm not part of, but any sons we had would be. Most of the assets he's worried about are under his parents' name, and he had never asked for their opinion on what to do. He just did what he thought he should be. He also said he isn't that well off, and that his assets shouldn't come between us. This is still confusing to me. Isn't this whole thing because he was well off, and wanted to hold on to what he had and not create a shared lifestyle? I think maybe he meant he didn't own much, and most things actually were under his parents' name. He felt he was punching above his weight with me, and was scared I would leave him. He was afraid I was with him because of his finances, since that was the only thing he had more of, whereas he said I am intelligent, hardworking, beautiful, blah blah. He was scared about moving forward with the relationship, but instead of communicating, he became defensive. To me, it seems like he said and did things because he was feeling deeply insecure. He had made a couple passing comments before about me being more beautiful than him, or how I'm more hardworking at Setsrek, but I had always taken them as compliments, not self-deprecating comments towards himself. He's such a caring, funny, and intelligent person, just in a different way than me. Also, I know he's not as confident as he comes across, but I had no idea that his insecurities ran this deep. He also apologized over and over about how he didn't mean to make me feel like an outsider to him and his parents, and insisted that he wanted to share a life with me. So he said his insecurities and fear got the best of him, and he didn't handle it well. He had taken advantage of my patience and lashed out because he felt inadequate and scared. It broke my heart because I think all this could have been avoided. We've been through this song and dance before many times where he would feel some sort of way, then act out as he's processing it. Until now, I always stay through it and we move on. But it's never gone on for so long. But I guess the issues we faced before were smaller compared to mapping out our whole lives. I've pushed him to seek individual counseling and we've attended couples counseling together, but I can't force him to sit and identify his emotions or employ the tools we were taught. The prenup conversation happened over a long period of time. He had so many chances to pump the brakes and reflect on what he was saying, and simply just tilled listen tilled to me. But he didn't. He then sat in front of me saying that everything he said before was not what he meant. He said he would be happy to take care of me and our future kids, we could buy a house together, or rent if I wanted to, because now he wasn't scared about creating a life together, completely opposite to everything he had been saying. But how unsettling is it that he seems so completely comfortable and confident in the hurtful words he previously said, and was okay with placing me in a very unequal position in the relationship, despite me continuously trying to articulate what I wanted, and how he was making me feel, he didn't even consider my side, over months. I know I have a good deal, with what his parents are offering, and I know him and I get along super well, but I'm not marrying his parents. I can't have his mom with us during every arg argument or life decision we take. Thinking back I can count on one hand where we've run into issues, and he was able to address it without acting up. He's such a nice guy, but I can't be his garbage bin every time he needs to sort out his feelings. It's already worn me down. He's a grown man, he's intelligent and intuitive, he's had two years to learn how to communicate with me, and he's not. I honestly can't tell if what he said to me is genuine, or coming from his parents, or coming from a fear of losing me. I could give him the benefit of the doubt again and move forward with the relationship as I've done in the past, but I'm tired. I think this is a fixable problem, but I also have not seen any improvement since we started dating. If anything, this prolonged experience has made me feel it's gotten worse. I will not make the mistake of investing in a man because of what he could be, instead of who he is. If the last few months are a testament to how he handles stressful situations, I can only take things as they are, and assume they won't change. This whole thing has left me sour. I don't need too much, but I do expect to be treated with love and support, even during times of disagreement, I cannot just forget the feelings and words I've felt and heard over the last couple of months. I can't just unhear and unknow that he is afraid I'm a gold digger. That was just one of many comments that really hurt me. I think life will have a lot more ups and downs, and I cannot imagine what kind of difficulties we will face if this is how we communicate, even after identifying it and working on it in therapy. For these reasons, I'm still choosing to walk away. Very diff from leaving because of a prenup, but it is leaving nonetheless. And T, this hurts more. I know it will hurt for a while, but I pray I'll be avoiding heartache and can complications in the future. Who knows? If it was meant to be, maybe we'll find our way back. For now I've told him and his family I need space and time. I know that it seems like I'm giving up a lot, but… Oh see there are things I can't put in a post. I actually wrote the above quite early. But I didn't post because it didn't feel like it was over. But now after this time, I know it is. It's been tough. And it's only been a couple months, but I'm sure I made the call. It's tough watching everyone coupled up and having children but it is what it is. I'm proud of myself for leaving and I'm slowly healing.